Right, this is the last section in the Argand diagrams chapter, regions in the Argand uh, diagram. And this is where instead of having an equal sign, um, we have either a greater than or less than sign. So let's try and uh, make this as straightforward as possible. So let's start with the circles. So the circles, we know that we have Z minus Z1. Now we'd normally have equal to R. Now, if you have less than R, okay, you shade the inside of the circle. Shade inside circle. That's basically what this region means. All the values that are less than R shade inside the circle. If you have Z1 is greater than R, you shade the outside of the circle, shade outside circle. So that's that for that loci. Um, if we have um, so this one, which is the perpendicular bisector. So we, we're used to seeing equals in between. Now this may have um, greater than or less than inside of it. Now, if you've got this symbol inside, OK, um, we shade the side which is closer to Z1. So um, shade the side closer to Z1. OK, that basically means uh, between the loci and Z1. So shade side closer to Z1. So i.e. between uh, Z and Z1. And if it's this, Z minus Z1 is greater than Z minus Z2, you do the opposite. So shade between um, Z and Z2. Yeah, so you either shade one side or the other. And actually, it's not strictly speaking correct that you shade um, between uh, Z and Z1. So I'll just correct that bit there. You're not really shading between them. You're just shading uh, one side or the other. So I'll correct that here and I'll put you shade uh, the side closer to Z2 and actually you can make this even easier and basically just say well if you look at the inequality sign whichever side it's pointing to that's the side you shade yeah so uh, sign points to the side you shade before we move on to the third one, let's have a look and see what these things look like. OK, so something like this. Like that for the first one, it may be that you shade in here. OK, or it may be. If we've got this that you shade outside. Yeah, so that's an example of each one of these. That's an example of that. This is an example of that one. Um, let's do examples of these ones here. So first one. So we've got two points here and here. We've got this perpendicular bisector. So if this is Z1 and this is Z2. So if we were to shade um, this side. OK, that's like the first type. So that's like this one here. Yeah. And if I had something like this and my two points, Z1, Z2, Z1, Z2, and my perpendicular bisects are like this. And I shaded this side like that. That would be an example of this second type here. You see that it's pointing to the side which you shade. So it's not between 
the perpendicular bisector Z and Z1 and Z2, as I said earlier, but either one side of, of that or the other. And then the last type that we have is where we've got the argument of Z. Now, we, again, with this one, we had the argument of Z minus Z1, half line starting with Z1. It was always equal to an argument. Um, it's normally uh, less than an angle, an argument. Not always, but it, it can be. Now, if it's, if it's this type, then you shade between that dotted line, that horizontal, and half line. And if you have argument Z minus Z1 is greater than that, then you shade above the half line, okay, where you're showing all the arguments which are uh, greater than that value. So let's uh, do some examples of each. So let's say I had a one like this, there's my half line like that. Let's say if I shaded that, that would be an example of this type. First one there, an example of this one. I've got my half line like that, and uh, we would then be shading around this side, yeah, where it's greater than the argument, not less than it. Let's watch out for positives and negatives in this case. Now, um, just with GCSE, when we did regions, if you have this or this, make sure that your boundary is marked by a dotted line. If you have uh, this or this, make sure your boundary is marked by a solid line. Right, on separate argand diagrams, shade the regions represented by those different things there. Okay, let's start with A. Right, make sure it's in the right format. So Z minus 4 plus 2I is less than 2. Right, so what's this? This is a circle. Um, the center is at 4, 2 with a radius of 2, so it goes down to the bottom here, it goes up to the top there, it goes across to 2 there, and it goes across to 6 here, like that, so we'll join those up. Now if it says less than or equal to 2, my boundary is a solid line, and I shade inside the circle. Second one. My um, in the correct format, Z minus uh, 4 plus 0 I is less than uh, Z minus 6 plus 0 I. Right, so let's draw that. So we have our two points at 4 and 6. Or six like this. Um, the loci is going to be uh, now because of that symbol there. The boundary is going to be a dotted line going through five, and I shade the side which it's pointing to, and it's pointing to the side that's got the four on it. So I shade this side here like that. Okay, and then. The third one, I'll put not one there, but that's not actually two. And the third one, that's an argument one. So let's draw another argand diagram like this. And um, uh, uh, oh, again, in the correct format, arg z minus that would be 2 plus 2i 
and it says it's less than or equal to pi over 4 so the boundary is going to be a solid line in this one like the first one so 2 2 is where my half line starts 2 2 with a circle there going up at an angle of pi over 4 which is 45 degrees so it's got a gradient of 1 there you go pi over 4 and since it's less than that I shade this bit here they're all the arguments less than pi over 4 so that's part A done part B recognize this symbol here yeah basically it's all of the ones that we drew in part A and I want to draw where they all overlap yeah now this bit here which you may not have seen before basically means that these are complex numbers that's all it means yeah so it doesn't make any difference to the way you work this out so let's try and draw in part b and take some doing let's try and draw all of these on the same grid so let's take this and make it a little bit shorter out of the way and we want to show the region where they all overlap Right, so we have this circle of center four two nine. So let's try and do that again. And I know it goes two six and up to four down to zero. Okay, and that's with a solid line. Yeah. Then, then, then. And we want everything shaded. Now I'll do it in a highlighter. I'll try and do it in a highlighter. It might look a bit neater. So um, that's not a highlighter. Let's try this. Okay, so that's the bit I'm interested in. There we go. Practice some colouring in like that okay the second one was the um, perpendicular bisector and that went through five as a dotted line so that's going to be here like that and i want the bit shaded which is on the left of that line now i'm going to shade it a different color because I'm really looking for where they all overlap and it'll be easier if they're done in different colours. So you might want to take a pack of colouring pencils into the Urban Mass Exam Joking. Okay, so let's do that. Like this, I can already see like the bit where the green and the orange overlap is in a slightly different colour. So I've got that. And then the last one I'm going to draw. Oh no, it's changed. Um, let's do right so this is the bit where they both overlap let's see what happens here let's see what happens with that okay right so the bit where they both overlap is now in blue then at the point two two I want my half line and that needs to be a solid line so it's like here I don't know whether it's inside the circle or not so half line going up like this and the dotted line here and it actually goes through the center of the circle and if i shade all of that then actually the bit where all three overlap is here it's going to be a bit difficult if i try and shade it so this is the bit where they all overlap quite tricky when you've got all this shading and you're trying to find where they all overlap what you might do is um, so that's our, a little tip is you might actually want to plot or shade the opposite okay and then look for the hole okay so uh, I'm just going to write this down if there is lots of shading like there was here shading 
then um, shade the uh, opposite parts and the answer will be the hole in the center and it's normally in the middle somewhere okay so what I mean by that is rather than light shade um, inside the circle when we're doing this we're putting them all together shade outside the circle rather than shade this side shade the other side rather than shade this bit here shade the other bit around there and then what you will have is this bit in the center where nothing is shaded and that will be our sometimes that's a bit easier right you should now be able to uh, do exercise 2f once that's completed uh, you can go on to the mixed exercises on pages 39 quite a long mixed exercise pages 39 to 41